listening to the Holistic Spaces podcast brought to you by Mindful Design Feng Shui School. Episode 174, Luck and Protection with Feng Shui. Welcome to episode 174 of the Holistic Spaces podcast, where we hope to inspire, educate, and empower you to create your own holistic spaces that nurture and resonate with you. Angie Cho and Laura Morris are the founders of the Mindful Design Feng Shui School. We teach Feng Shui online at mindfuldesignschool.com. Check us out. Check out our website. Be sure to sign up for our mailing list. If you go to mindfuldesignschool.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, you can enter your email address. And we send out content that's only available to our newsletter subscribers, as well as special workshops and different opportunities. Again, only available to our newsletter subscribers. And also make sure it doesn't go to spam as well. So before we get started talking about luck and protection, we wanted to let everyone know that, um, in case you didn't know, Laura and I teach a feng shui certification program. So we teach people to really dive deep with feng shui, to become feng shui practitioners, as well as learn how to actually offer this as a service to others. And so we teach a we teach two semesters each year, and we have very small cohorts. So it's a small group, only 18 people per cohort. And once it sells out, it sells out. So keep an eye out, join our mailing list, and you'll be informed when we open up the enrollment, which is going to be very soon. And we hope to see you in class one day because we really love meeting all our students and we keep it super tight, like just, again, 18 students. So we get to know each person and we want to work with each person personally mm -hmm. yeah and you said it opens next week the enrollment i said very soon oh okay all right so very soon maybe next week um okay <laughs> so today we are talking about luck and protection with feng shui and what we did is we pulled together five not really symbols but they're five things, concepts, symbols, things that you can do in feng shui that directly connect with luck and protection. So I think everyone thinks when you think about the practice of feng shui, most people think about both of those things, luck and protection. And then of course there's prosperity and abundance, but luck and protection, I would say are the, probably the most fundamental and foundational things about the practice of feng shui of why people um, come to the practice, why they're, why the practice has, you know, basically been going on for thousands of years. And the idea is that luck and protection to me, they both mean to be well, to be healthy, to be protected is to be well, and then to be well and healthy is to be lucky. Right. So at the end of the day, at the heart of it is probably really just being, um, you know, having your health, having, um, feeling fulfilled and being content. And so the practice of feng shui is a way for you to improve your luck and to make yourself feel more protected and make sure that your environment is set up to give you that additional protection so that you can move through the world and, um, you know, continue to prosper. Yeah. And there's so many concepts in feng shui where we acknowledge that as human beings, we're looking for stability and safety and reference points and and um, a ground to walk on. So really, a lot of what feng shui is about is how to set up your environment so that you have some control, you can see, you are in um, facing what's coming towards you so mm -hmm. that you have an advantage and that you can use your environment to your advantage to support you rather than cause more stress, cause more um, difficulty or put you in a, in a precarious position where you can be surprised. Yeah, so you can show up better in the world. And of course there's, you know, there's some magical elements to feng shui about improving your luck and um, things that are powerful and um, have deep energies wound, you know, sort of wound through them. And we're going to talk about a few of them, but Angie was almost setting up for the first point, which is all about really making sure that you are set up in your environment the best way you can be so that you can face things head on. And so the, the first point 
we would say is the commanding position or command position, which if you've been listening to this podcast, you will have heard us speak about it several times. And it is a way for you to be in the best position and placement to invite in this luck and this protection. Because when you are in command, you feel less anxious, you feel more protected, you're also able to see what's coming at you. To coming towards you, you can tackle things out into the world, you can resolve issues better, right? And we could all use more of that. We don't need to, we don't need to make life harder than it is. So by doing this really simple feng shui concept, which is to put yourself in the commanding position, you can, it will, it will help you move through the world more easily. So the commanding position is when you can easily see the door or the entrance from where you are seated or you're standing. Mostly we think about it in a few specific areas, but it's really, if you're sitting down or if you're lying in bed, let's say, and you don't have to sort of crane your neck around and look around or go into a weird position, you can just sit there comfortably and you can see what's coming at you. And there are three areas that you can look at setting yourself in this commanding position to improve the, to, to gain more protection security and to improve the luck in each of these areas of your life. And so each, there's three areas and each of those connects to a realm or an area of your life. So for instance, by setting up your bed so that when you're lying and reclining in, in your bed, you can see the door, you are giving your private and personal life, those personal aspects of you, you know, where you sleep, intimacy, all those private parts that you know help you feel better when you do go out into the public realm. Those things are happening in your bedroom and in your bed. So setting yourself up in command will help protect that part of your life. A desk, having your desk set up in command will really help to bring more luck and protection for your work life and your career. And then having your stove be in command is connected with your money and abundance, that part of your life, because the stove is connected to that realm of your life. So by putting yourself into command for each of these, you are able to move through the world more easily and feel less anxious. And if you want to get specifics on how you put yourself in command position, um, we will put a link in the show notes to a, uh, we literally did an entire podcast on it. So we'll, we'll put that in there rather than getting into all the details of each of the areas. Okay. And the next item that can bring luck and protection with feng shui are protector deities or protector symbols or protector protectors. And you may have seen some Buddhist or Hindu artwork that includes very fierce looking deities are actually called wrathful deities, but um, fierce might be more accurate because wrathful seems a little bit uh, negative, but um, they're very fierce because fierce has a, an, a different connotation. And they are protectors because they actually defend us against uh, against different obstacles in our lives, in our minds, like ignorance and confusion. And they may be depicted like humans. Um, I actually go often to a museum near me here in New York City called the Rubin Museum, and it's a museum dedicated to Himalayan art. And they used to have a program called the Dream Over, and you'd actually be able to sleep in the museum. And the last time I went, I was selected to sleep under a wrathful deity. And it was like this, um, this pr protector deity that was, she's all red with flames, and she had a bow and arrow. And like often they're like standing on top of um, like skulls or something and they can be a little bit goth looking, but really um, the interesting thing about that one particular deity is that she actually, her bow and arrow are made of flowers. So I thought that was very interesting since I have um, like flowers are one of the tools that I use for my practice to defend myself against obstacles like ignorance and confusion. So um so they can also be symbols like geometric figures. They can also be um, represented by animals. Like if you've seen foo dogs 
or um, lions or different, like depending on the di different culture, like a pair of them at a front door, they are representing this protector energy to kind of defend against any challenges and difficulties. But, you know, besides the most obvious way of looking at protection, there is I want, I want everyone to remember there's also like protecting from your own neuroses and what's going on in your inner environment. So it's not just about protecting from negative things coming from outside of you because, you know, in feng shui, we really don't look at good and bad in this duality and in a polarized duality, we look at them as two part, two sides of the same coin. And so we invite all of you to see what you're attracted to, check out your own cultural background, as well as maybe the place that you live now or something that you're attracted to, and be curious and see if there's a fierce protector deity in the form of statues or artwork or symbols that represent this powerful energy to bring, to bring compassion and wisdom into your home and to acknowledge um, the obstacles that we we encounter, whether that be from other people or from ourselves. The next element or symbol or way that you can protect yourself is to connect with your animal best friend. And when we say animal best friend in this context, we're talking about the Chinese zodiac and the 12 animals. So feng shui is connected quite a bit with the practice of the four pillars and Chinese astrology. And what you need to know is you need to know your animal because each animal has its own energy type and uh, each of them has its own nuance. So, and within that, the way that this cycle of 12 animals is set up, they have a best friend, which creates this ideal relationship between energies. So each year, you know, we're, there's all, if you've ever, if any of you have been to our reset, our um, Lunar New Year reset, we always talk about what that animal will be for the year animal. So, you know, each year it changes and you, we always tell people, if you feel that it might be a challenging year based on whatever's happening. And we go through all that when we do our, our, our reset we recommend that you carry a three-dimensional image of the year's animal's best friend, but you can also carry around your own best friend at all times, if you want to, to improve your energy, to have your, uh, count, your energetic counterpart with you at all times. So I'll, I'll go through the pairs. So you need to know your Zodiac animal. So you can, it's pretty easy. You can Google that in about five seconds and you know your birthday. And then you, the pair of best friends are, so if you, it's rat and ox. So those guys are besties, tiger and pig, rabbit and dog, dragon and rooster, snake and monkey and horse and ram. So you, if you can, you know, figure out what your animal is, and then you can carry around, you can get a little symbol, a little charm of a 3D charm of your bestie, animal bestie, to improve your energy and well, to improve your luck and to add that extra layer of protection. And the fourth way to bring more luck and protection into your home with feng shui is with fresh oranges. So oranges are considered very auspicious in feng shui. That means they're very lucky and very protective. So there's many different ways, some of them, many different ways in which the orange is so significant. One is that the shape is auspicious. The shape resembles coins. And then the color represents or resembles gold, right? So if we bring the shape and color together, oranges can represent gold coins, which leads us to the feeling of abundance and prosperity. And um, 
financial wealth as well. The scent of oranges is very protective and it's considered the most yang energy. It's like the energy of the sun at high noon and oranges have this bright yang energy and actually can represent the sun. So you can simply have a bowl of fresh oranges in your kitchen to uplift the energy and the kitchen would be a good place because your kitchen represents the place you nourish yourself and in turn that helps to offer more luck and more protection because when you are healthy and nourished you can really thrive in the world that's one of the most important things right your health is your wealth right and you could even take it further Um, Well, first of all, you can definitely eat the oranges. I always get that question. Can I eat the oranges? Yes, you can eat the oranges. And you can also save the orange peels and keep them fresh and, and squeeze them and use the scent of the oranges to clear the energy in your space because that scent is so bright, life affirming and auspicious. Then the last symbol or way that you can bring in for protection and for luck is the color red. So the color red is probably one of the mo- the quickest one that everyone recognizes as being lucky and auspicious is that red. You know, we always think of, you know, oh, I'll paint my front door red to bring in more luck and prosperity. And yes, that is that is actually a way you can do it. You can paint your front door, you can bring the color red into decor items in your home. Red, the color red can solve a lot of issues in a, in a space on a feng shui level. It can correct a lot of um, you know, unlucky things or things that may cause, um, cause you to worry. Because red has this, it's, it's a protector. It has this ability to cleanse. It has this ability to correct. And so if you are feeling like maybe you need a, you might need a little boost energy wise anyway, but you might feel that you need that clearing kind of protective energy, add a little red to your design or even wear red. Wearing red is very powerful. It's a very powerful way to show up and and be able to take on the world it is like you are you we often in feng shui or when I, and when i think of it, it when i think of the color red and specifically for instance we do the red envelope tradition it really is a way it's almost like it burns off any of that negativity it it can protect you it's like a it's like a ward it's like a seal and the red is you know considered this auspicious color because it you know it symbolizes vitality lifeblood it is um, used in so many adjustments that we do in the practice on many levels on a very simple mundane level, like I said, you know, adding red to your decor or a much deeper level and some of the, you know, some of the elements we use like cinnabar or red, uh, red ribbons and red strings. So all of these things connect back to this really protective, but also lucky um, um, elements of the color red and it supersedes all other colors and everything. I mean, it is like the Uber color. So it's, it's, and it's so easy to use too. It's such a great way to do it. So we've yeah, got our five. Yeah. And, and one last thing about red, you don't need mm. to like, we're not talking about painting your whole house mm. red. I mean, it could be even a red string on your wrist. Mm-hmm. It can be very, very subtle. And layer yes, on the so, intention there. And then mm-hmm. because that'll that'll really kick start it too. Yes. Well, with feng shui, less is more. Mm-hmm. So we also don't recommend you do all of these things. <laughs> Just pick <laughs> one that re- resonates with you. So um, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Holistic Spaces podcast. You can tune in every Monday for a new podcast episode. And if you really want to dive in deep, check out our Feng Shui certification program. We teach Feng Shui online. We teach people to really dive deep in a long certification program, six months, 100 hours, and a very small cohort of 18 maximum. And you can always support the podcast by sharing it with others, subscribing, leaving a review, and 
Also, signing up for our mailing list. Go to mindfuldesignschool.com, scroll to the bottom. You can put in your mailing list. We have a lot of special offers there, different workshops and content that's only available to our newsletter subscribers. So we really enjoyed chatting with you this week and thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next week.